Rambam Mishnah Torah, near zero, chapter 8, one chapter a day. Halacha 1. What does the shaving required after the completion of the Nazarite vow purity involve? When the Nazarite completes the observance of the days of his Nazarite vow, he should bring three animals as sacrifices, a male lamb for a burnt offering, a ewe as a sin offering, and a ram as a peace offering. The following rules apply when a person brought three animals but did not specify for which sacrifice each was designated. The one fit to be offered as a sin offering should be offered as a sin offering. The one fit to be offered as a burnt offering should be offered as a burnt offering and the one fit to be offered as a peace offering should be offered as a peace offering. Together with the ram, with the ram brought as a peace offering, he should bring six and two-thirds estronaut of fine flour. He should bake 20 loaves from them, 10 loaves of matzah, and 10 loaves of matzah wafers. He should pour a reviit of a log of oil over these loaves, over these 20 loaves. This measure is a halacha transmitted to Moshe at Sinai. The 20 loaves should be brought in one container. Halacha 2. He should slaughter the sin offering first, then the burnt offering, and then the peace offering. Afterwards, he should shave. If he shaved after bringing the sin offering or the burnt offering, he fulfills his obligation. He should cook the peace offering or boil it. He should take from the source of the peace offering and apply it to his hair. Afterwards, he should place the hair under the pot where the peace offering is cooking. If he placed it under the pot of the sin offering, he fulfilled his obligation. Halakha 3. Where does he shave his hair? In the women's courtyard, in the chamber of the Nazarites, that was in the southeastern corner. There they would cook their peace offerings and cast their hair into the fire. If he shaved outside the temple, he fulfills his obligation. Whether he shaves outside the temple or inside it, he should cast his hair under the pot. He should not shave until the entrance to the temple courtyard is open, for Numbers 6.18 states, at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The intent is not that he should shave in front of the entrance of the sanctuary, for that would be demeaning to the sanctuary. Halakha 4. Afterwards, the priest takes the roasted forearm of the ram, one matzah from the basket and one wafer, and places them on the palm or the Nazarite, or female Nazarite, and waves them. Afterwards, the Nazarite is permitted to drink wine and to become impure due to contact with the dead. Halakha 5. A bald Nazarite does not have to pass a razor over his head, even though a Nazarite does not have hair or does not have a palm, may still bring his sacrifices. He may then drink wine and become impure. If he brought his sacrifices but did not shave his head, the failure to shave does not prevent the termination of his Nazarite vow, and he may drink wine and become impure that evening. Once the blood from one of the sacrifices has been sprinkled upon him, he is permitted, although the portions of the sacrifice were not placed on his hand, and he did not wave them. For all these factors are the most desirable way of performing the mitzvah. <coughs> Excuse me. They are not an absolute requirement. Halakha 6. Although the shaving is not an absolute requirement, it is a mitzvah for the Nazarite to shave. Even if an extensive time has passed since the completion of his Nazarite vow. When a Nazarite shaves without using a razor, or he shaved and left two hairs, it is as if he did nothing. He did not fulfill the mitzvah of shaving. This applies whether the Nazarite is pure or impure. Halakha 7. When a Nazarite shaved, left two hairs, his hair grew back entirely, and he shaved his head again, removing those two hairs, or he shaved one and the other fell off, he has fulfilled the mitzvah of shaving. If one fell off and he shaved the other one, the mitzvah of shaving does not apply. <coughs> Halakha 8. When a Nazarite shaved his head with when his, when his peace offering was brought and that offering was unacceptable 
His shaving is also unacceptable, and his sacrifices are not of consequence for him. If he shaved when his sin offering was brought, and it was discovered that the sin offering was not slaughtered with that intent, and afterwards he brought the peace offering and the burnt offering and offered them as required, his shaving is also unacceptable, and his sacrifices are not of consequence for him. Halchanan. If he shaved his head when his burnt offering and peace offering were brought, but they were slaughtered for another intent, his shaving is also unacceptable and his sacrifices are not of consequence for him. If he shaved his head when he brought all three offerings and one of them was acceptable, his shaving is acceptable. Afterwards, he should bring the other offerings that were not acceptable and offer them in an acceptable, in an acceptable manner. Halachas 11. Whenever, whenever we have said his shaving is unacceptable, he is considered as one who shaved in the midst of the days of his Nazarite vow, who invalidates 30 days of, observ of observance as explained. Thus, he should observe, observe the laws of a Nazarite for 30 days after the unacceptable shaving and then bring his sacrifices. Halacha 12. The peace offerings of a Nazarite that were slaughtered in a manner that did not conform to their requirements are acceptable, but they do not fulfill the obligations of the Nazarite who brought them. They may only be eaten for one day, and they need not be accompanied by bread. Nor are they placed on the Nazarite's hand for waving, nor is the foreleg given to the priest. Halacha 13. These three animals and the bread that accompanies them all must come from ordinary property, as is true with regard to other vows to sanctify offerings, as will be explained in the appropriate place. Halacha 14. When a person says, I am becoming a Nazarite on the condition that when I perform the shaving, I'll be able to bring my sacrifices using money exchanged for the second tithe, he becomes a Nazarite, but he should not bring his sacrifices using such funds. Instead, he must purchase them with ordinary funds. Halacha 15. When a man takes a vow to become a Nazarite, he may bring sacrifices set aside by his father for this purpose. A woman, by contrast, may not perform the shaving using the sacrifices of her father. This is a halacha conveyed by the oral tradition. What is implied? A person's father took a Nazarite vow, set aside money to purchase sacrifices, to offer on the completion of that vow, but died before he could offer them. The money was left without being designated for any specific purpose. After his father died, he said, I am a Nazarite on the condition that I am able to bring my sacrifices from the money which my father set aside for his sacrifices. He may bring his sacrifices from these funds. Similarly, if he and his father were Nazarites and his father set aside money for his sacrifices, without designating it for a specific offering, and then died, if, after the father's death, the son said, I'll perform the shaving with the sacrifices of my father, he may bring his sacrifices from these funds. If he does not make these statements, the money should be used for free will offerings. If the father died and left many sons, they should divide the money that was not specified among themselves because it is their inheritance. Each one may perform the shaving with sacrifices purchased from his portion. The firstborn receives a double portion. Halakha 16. Whether the father was a Nazarite for all time and the son was a Nazarite for a limited time or the father was a Nazarite for for a limited time, and the son was a Nazarite for all time, the son may perform the shaving and bring his sacrifices from the money designated for the Nazarite, vow of his father. Halakha 17. If the father set aside money to bring the sacrifices that are required when a Nazarite emerges from impurity and dies, the sons may not use that money to purchase sacrifices that are offered when one completes the Nazarite vow in purity. Similarly, if the father set them aside for the sacrifices offered when one completes the Nazarite vow in purity, the son may not use them for the shaving and the sacrifices required when a Nazarite emerges from impurity. There is an unresolved doubt whether this is acceptable. 
if he brought his sacrifices from such funds, he's not considered to have fulfilled his obligation. Halacha 18. If a person says, it is my responsibility to perform the shaving for a Nazarite, he's obligated to bring the sacrifices required when a Nazarite completes his vow in purity. He may have them offered by any Nazarite that he desires. If he said, I'm obligated to bring half of the sacrifices of a Nazarite, or he said it is my responsibility to provide the means for half the shaving of for a Nazarite, he's obligated to bring the sacrifices required of any Nazarite he desires. That Nazarite should bring the remainder of his sacrifices from his own funds. If, however, he said, I'm obligated to bring the sacrifices of half a Nazarite, he must bring all of the sacrifices of a Nazarite, for there is no concept of being half a Nazarite. Halakha 19. When one says, I'm becoming a Nazarite, and I accept the responsibility to provide the means for shaving for a Nazarite, and his colleague says, and so am I, the colleague is a Nazarite, but he is not obligated to provide the means for the shaving, for he only included himself in his colleague's statements with regard to becoming a Nazarite. If he said, and so am I, and I accept the responsibility to provide the means for shaving for a Nazarite, he is obligated for this as well. If they are clever, each one should bring sacrifices provided by his colleague. If they do not do this, they are each obligated to provide the means for shaving for the shaving of other Nazarites. Halakha 20. If one says, I am a Nazarite and it is my responsibility to provide the means for half the shaving for a Nazarite, and his colleague hears and says, I also am a Nazarite and I also accept the responsibility to provide the means for half the shaving for a Nazarite, they are both Nazarites. If they are clever, one should bring half the sacrifices of the other, and the second should bring half the sacrifices of the first, and then each one should complete the required sacrifices from his own resources. If not, in addition to bringing their own sacrifices, each one must bring half the sacrifices of any Nazarite he chooses.